Well, y'all, as far as Messy Monday is concerned, I don't know what the hell we gonna do as creators for Messy Monday. I don't know. What's going on, you guys? It's be your boy Scotty, and we're here for my review of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 9, Episode 9, okay? So this is the last episode of the season. We're going to get right on into this shit, so let's just start it off, shall we? So Akbar comes into Sierra Salon. She's there to fake get her hair done, because we already know that when these folks be doing hair on these shows and all of that stuff, they don't be really be doing no goddamn hair. You know, they just do it for the scene, child. But, you know, we're going to stick to the damn script or whatever. So Sierra, no, Akbar asked Sierra um, what was going on, what happened with Paris or whatever. And Sierra was like, well, you know, after everything that happened with Paris and the woman trying to jump on her with her daughter and all of that stuff, I had to take Paris out of school and put her in private school. And she actually likes it or whatnot. And Akbar was like, well, I'm glad that she likes it. You know, I hate that I missed her birthday party. And Sierra was like, well, girl, I'm glad that you missed it. See, then Sierra started saying she still can't believe that BK really went through all of that trouble to do all of that shit at Paris' birthday party. She still can't believe it. Bitch, I can't believe it either. Just like I still can't believe that you're still with his motherfucking ass. You need to know. I'm not going to go into all of that. I, I did all that on the last video. I'm not going to go there today. So as they're talking, you know, um, Akbar was talking about her music career and how she was talking to a record label. And that at this point, she really doesn't know where her music career is going to go. And she see all these girls out here and they don't know how to rap. She she really raps like she a real rapper. Like she Lady of Rage type of rapper. Like she Queen Latifah. Like she really about that business when it come down to the rapping and all of this other stuff. You know what I mean? As much as I don't like the folks queen of Atlanta, I bar can rap. Her music is just cheap as fuck. She need to get a good producer and she needs to find... Um, a good personality and attitude because at the rate at the rate that she's going she's never gonna be nobody's music artist she's never gonna make it okay like on love and hip-hop we have all these people that make it cardi b made it k michelle made it all these other people made it but you're not gonna make it because you're not likable in the least bit you're not like likable and it ain't got nothing to do with your weight you are a pretty woman you are but your priorities are all in the wrong place all you're thinking about is beefing with another bitch not not thinking about beefing with a microphone or a pen in a pad you're thinking about the wrong motherfucking shit and then you want to talk about your beef with light skin keisha and sierra said that she like her music bitch you mad because she like her music as a matter of fact i bar her music shits all over yours her music has been played on the fucking radio what the fuck your music at bitch Okay, where is yours? I'm trying to figure out where your music has been at. Uh, that's that's all I'm trying to figure out. Where your music is. Because all you ever do is sit up here and talk about how good of a rapper you are. Where's your mixtape? Where's your EP at? Where, where, where your radio singles at? Light Skin Keisha got that. Everybody know. We all know who the fuck Light Skin Keisha is. Don't nobody know you, Ogbar. Don't nobody know you. And I don't give a damn who come in my comment section today. I done got bullied all day by Nene and Porsche fans today. I done got bullied by the ass all day. I don't give a damn. Don't come up in here telling me, oh, everybody know Akbar. People know Akbar. People, don't nobody know shit. Okay? Don't nobody know that damn girl at the end of the day. So, no. Fuck all that. She need to stop talking about. You always like people. That's why you always in the predicament you in. You need to learn. You need to pick a side. Pick a side. And just like Sierra said, I don't have to have beef with a bitch just because you do. I don't know. I don't like people like that. Just because you got to beef with somebody that means I got to dislike them. I'm not necessarily saying that I got to be friends with them. But I got to hate a person just because you do. When I have a beef with a motherfucker, I don't expect for Jamal to have beef with them. Why? Because it's not his fight. It's my fight. So I would never put nobody in no position to choose no side. So fuck Akbar, bitch. Light skin Keisha and her man, they have a conversation about her beef with Akbar. And he say he don't want her to be out here fighting Akbar and doing all this other shit with all these other rapper chicks. He just want her to be doing her thing. She said, I'm not trying to have no beef with Akbar. I don't even know this bitch like that. However, if she ready to be bout it, then bitch, I'm ready to be bout it too at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, she ain't trying to have no smoke. But if Akbar want the smoke, 
Light skinned Keisha gonna give her that smoke. I love me some light skinned Keisha, bitch. I really do. So it's time for Spice's event. And let me just tell y'all something. Spice has really grown on me over the last couple of seasons. Because y'all know I didn't like that bitch when she first came on. But she's grown on me. And I really want to see her win. And I want to see her be able to provide for her kids the way that she wants to. And have them there with her. I really want to see that for her. Like, she seems to be a decent, genuine, ride or die bitch. So, you know, I kind of do feel Spice. And I kind of like her at this point in time. You know what I mean? She's grown on me a lot. So, Kiyomi comes in and with Carly. And there's Alexis Sky sitting there. You know, Carly and Alexis, they're cordial. And Kiyomi was happy to meet Alexis Sky. She basically tells her, you know, I know you because I know Fetty. And then, you know, she's like, we used to talk, you know what I mean? Like back in the day, like, but we're re but we're very close. I don't like Kiyomi, but I don't think that she was being messy when she said that to Alexis Sky. I don't think that she was. And Alexis, ain't Fetty, isn't Fetty not your baby father? Like, didn't you have a DNA test and the test said that it wasn't your baby dad? Like, can somebody just let me know, correct me on this? Because I really thought that that wasn't her baby daddy. That's what I thought. Like, can y'all help me with that? Please. So, they're talking about um, Alexis Sky's past with sex trafficking and whatnot. They're talking about that. And, um, Carly starts questioning her, like, well, Mo said he met you when you were 16. My thing about it is, Carly, why the fuck you being messy, you duck mouth ass bitch? Why the fuck is you being messy? You are way too old to be sent. Like, Alexa Sky is nobody's victim. She's nobody's nothing. But all I'm gonna say is this, Carly. You dead ass wrong for that. You picking on this girl, and you always wanna victim shame some fucking body, because you did that shit with K. Michelle, when K. Michelle said that she got her ass beat by Miff Hicks. You did that then, so why are you doing this? And then, then you get your ass beat by Mo, so how would you feel if somebody question your fucking story? Bitch, have a fucking seat, bitch. All this shit that you be having going on with all these motherfucking niggas and you want to sit up here and question another bitch story? Bitch, have a goddamn seat because I'm pretty sure you got a lot of stories of your own to tell you motherfucking quack quack duck looking bitch. I'm sick of you. Go somewhere and sit down. You always trying to be messy all the time, bitch. So then Shekana comes in and then Carly tries to reintroduce Shekana and Akbar and it was pretty clear that, what's the point? They don't fuck with each other, Carly. Like, why the fuck would you even do that, bitch? Like, I don't even understand your point. Well, what were you given when you did that? It was no need for you to do that. And it starts a whole situation with Akbar and Shikana. Akbar done thrown a drink on Shikana. Why Akbar always want to fuck with Shikana when she know that Shikana don't fight? Why? Y'all know she don't fight. You know that she gonna go to the police on your ass. Why the fuck you always trying to fight this motherfucking girl? You know she ain't about that life. You know she ain't with that smoke. Why you always doing that? And Shikana, stop trying to get hype once you get outside. Side because you know you don't want to fight the damn girl so stop it but Akbar is a big ass bully and she always trying to bully bitches that she know that she can whoop all the time or who she thinks she can whoop we saw you on camera bitch you can't even fight you got your ass beat so you want to get up on here and want to cap and play tough like you like you Billy badass and she like you a big um overgrown dog trying to um bully motherfuckers like girl have a goddamn so you stay trying that shit with Shikana but at the end of the day Carly was fucking messy for even doing that shit that she tried the pool. And you already know Spice is already mad because she already told Akbar not to start on shit at her event, but she did anyway. Then the next thing, you know, light skin Keisha and Tokyo walk in, and then you know, as it's already heat. Light skin Keisha and Tokyo walk, in, walk up, and they see Shikana crying, upset, pissed off because of the drink that was thrown at her. They walk in. Next thing you know, Akbar gets up to try to charge light skin Keisha, and here come Tokyo. Jumping right on in, and light skin Keisha was not playing with her, and neither was Tokyo. They did not come to play with your ass, bitch. See, that's what the fuck you get. All that shit you got going last year, and now somebody finally put hands on your motherfucking ass. Bitch, you got your ass beat, okay? You got your ass beat, okay? And that's what the fuck your ass get. And then Spice even got on your ass. Did everybody want to get on your motherfucking ass? All because you think that you a badass bitch. You're not that fucking bad, bitch. You got weight, but that's it. You, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to beat up a cow. But at the end of the day, bitch, you got beat up at the end of the day. So it is what it is. Like, this bitch really got a lot of nerve. Then Carla talking about, if anybody want to fight Spice, I'm going to fight too. Bitch, you cannot fight. Like, girl, stop. What have you been about that life, Carla? You stay getting punk. You got punk by Jocelyn. You got, like, you stay getting punk, bitch. Like, go somewhere and sit the fuck down. You the biggest punk on this goddamn show behind Georgia Prune. You the biggest punk on here. So who the fuck is you going to damn fight? Like, go somewhere and sit down, because Spice don't need you to fight her fucking battles at all. Go somewhere and sit down with your messy ass. You want to be a part of something so goddamn bad. Next thing you know, light skin Keisha tried to pull up on Akbar. She jumps out the car. Production even ran. It, it was a big mess, but goddamn, I was like, why did this have to be the last episode? Goddamn, Corona. You had to fuck it all up. God.
God damn, I was so good. But I was so glad that somebody had to about her ass real talk for real. So, Scrappy and Shooter and Kirk, they start talking about everything that's going on with Bambi being pregnant. Shooter situation with Keom and Cheyenne. And he felt like his relationship with all three of these folks, including Scrap, is a done deal pretty much. And now he feel like he need to check Keomi about fucking around with Scrap if she fucked around with him. But as they're having a conversation... Production comes in and shut that shit down and say it's a done deal, it's a wrap. We can't film no more due to the coronavirus. Kirk said, now how are we supposed to live? But y'all get on here and talk about how much money you fucking got. So that means you need this check. You need it. You got all these businesses. You ain't got no money saved up to keep you afloat for the time being. Like, what's going on, Kirk? Like, straight up. Nigga, you better go You better go get a job in retail like me and be the essential worker until Love and Hip Hop Cams and come the fuck back on. Everybody got to eat, you know what I mean? Like, I see a lot of people at my job right now, like, a lot of folks have been affected by this whole virus situation and their jobs have shut down. A lot of the good paying jobs have shut down and a lot of these people are, some folks are not able to get unemployment because the lines are always busy. So it's always, like, they hard, it's hard to, you know, to get it. But some people having to get, like, jobs at Instacart and DoorDash and shit like that just to get some money, you know what I mean? You gotta do what you gotta do at this fucking point. You gotta make sure you have your 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 your, your cash. And I'm thankful and as much as I can't stand my job most of the time being a retail worker, being essential, I still am grateful that I have a job because people don't even have jobs at this point sometimes at this point. Like some people don't even have work or or even getting any income. So I, I'm thankful that I'm able to have a job. I'm, a, I'm thankful that I'm able to pay some of these bills. I'm thankful to still be able to do my videos for you guys. So I just want everybody to stay safe, stay sanitized, stay clean, do what you got to do, wear your mask when you go out, do whatever you got to do to stay safe because it's rough out there right now. And I, I and another thing, I just don't want y'all, don't be in fear either. Don't live in fear. Don't let this shit scare you. You just take the proper precautions to protect yourself. I know it's scary right now, but don't let that shit fuck your, your mind. That's all I can say about that. But with that being said, you guys, this is my review on Love and Hip Hop. I don't know what we're going to do about Monday nights, but I'm going to have to figure something out really fast. And I'm out of here, you guys. Peace out.